Oh, what a penalty. <sighs> We're watching it live, guys. Live reactions here of the uh, Croatia versus Russia penalty shootout. And as it stands, Croatia are winning. They have the advantage by one. He has to score. This is it. He does. He scores. Oh, the pressure right now. If Croatia score this next penalty, they are through to the semi-finals against England. I don't know what I want from this. I don't know who I want England to face. I think either way, it's going to be extremely tough. Okay, here we go. It's Rakitic of Barcelona. Can't ask for a better player, really, can you? To take a, take a penalty to win a quarter-final. Here we go. I'm so nervous for them. The whistle blows. Here we go. Are they going through? Yeah. There you go. Croatia are through. They will be facing England. How do I feel about that? I don't know. Honestly, I, I just I don't know what I wanted from this game. I think that either way, look at it this way. Russia, we're playing against the home nation with all of the fans behind them. And with Croatia, we're playing the better team, the better squad. So either way, it's going to be really tough. But we've got Croatia, and now we focus on that. So let's do a quick review of this game, and then we'll get on to the big one, which is, of course, Sweden against England earlier on today. Not exactly the best game of the World Cup so far, but lots of drama. Last-minute header from uh, Fernandes, who, of course, was Brazilian and now is Russian. I mean... You couldn't write it, really, could you? What a header, although it came off the side of his face by the looks of it. To make it 2 all in extra time to take its penalty. And, and then he misses his own penalty. It was really bad. Oh, jeez, what a game. What a game. I don't know where to start. I actually missed a portion of the second half, by the way. So if it seems like there's a little bit missing, it's because I wasn't able to watch about 25, 30 minutes of it, which was a shame. Um, but from, from the get-go, it was one of those cagey matches where both teams looked a little bit reluctant to go forward too much. They seemed a little bit nervy, just like in the Sweden-England game. Both teams just a little bit nervous, a little bit apprehensive. It's not very often these teams get into, you know, this this far of a, of a tournament, especially England. So, um, yeah, I think provided that, you know, there was nerves there and the fact that they, they might have been just a little bit cautious, maybe overly cautious. You can understand why the game wasn't absolutely phenomenal as we would have expected. So um, fair play to Croatia. I know it's penalties. I know it's horrendous to see a team go out, especially when it's the hosts on penalties. But it's just the way it is. It's football and that's just... Uh, yeah, like I said, the way it is. So well done to Croatia. I'm looking forward to that game when England play on Wednesday, I believe it is. It's not too long away. And you know what? One of the benefits of this game going to extra time and penalties is the fact that they are going to be potentially more tired and they're going to need more recovery time, more treatments to get back to their best. So hopefully we can use that to our advantage. England technically get a three, four hour head start on treatment and recovery might not sound like much, but in a professional game of football, any professional sport, hours do count. It really does. And the fact that they've played the extra time, they've done the penalties mentally and physically, it's, it's tougher than playing just 90 minutes. And you've got to be honest, we had a much easier ride against Sweden than Croatia did against Russia. It's just the way it is. And um, I hope that does work in our favour. So apologies if you wanted me to talk more about this game. Um, there really wasn't much to talk about, if I'm honest, that, again, I missed a little bit of it as well. So let's just jump into the Sweden-England game because that is the one I really want to talk about. As an England fan, I'm so, so incredibly proud of this team. And I'm so proud of Southgate as well. When he was first announced as the England manager, I'm not going to lie, wasn't impressed. I thought that is such a safe boring choice but what a way to turn everyone's opinions around this guy go, goes home a hero regardless of what happens in the semis you know this England team is the best I've seen for a while not in terms of individual quality I mean I grew up with Michael Owen Beckham Gerard Scholes uh, Lampard Rio all of these guys they were a better team but they weren't a better team <laughs> you know this this squad is so tight and so it's it's a family it really feels like that, and you've got to give it to Southgate. He's he's done a great job in getting this team together and playing good football, and I'm super, super proud of them. We're in the semi-finals. We're playing against Croatia. We now know that. 
And that's great. Set our sights on beating them on Wednesday and we will be in the final of the World Cup. The final. And if we get there, no matter what happens, it has been a hugely successful tournament. You could even say that already. That the fact that we're in the semis is already a huge success. But of course, we want it to come home. Everyone singing it's coming home. It's a meme at this point. And I don't think anyone actually believes it just yet. It's just one of those things. You say it. You want it to come true. Everyone before this tournament would have taken the quarters, the semis. No one in their right mind would have predicted you know, just how fortunate we've got with the draws and how fortunate the results have been outside of our control. And the fact that we're getting into the semis, everyone would have taken that. You know, it's unbelievable. Today could have been against Germany. We could have got smashed 4-0. It's not the case. We've actually beaten a very solid Sweden side who I think eventually we're going to run out of luck. Um, you know, they're not the best squad in the tournament. We all know that. And uh, to get through to the quarterfinals, though, you have to be a good team. There's no doubt about it. There's no easy games. They made it to the quarters because they were a good team. So I, I was really happy that we got Sweden just purely because I really like the team. They played fair. There was no aggression there. There was no dirty tactics and cheating it was a very nice fair game if you ask me which was refreshing because it feels like every game leading up to this one it was really difficult for England we were playing against teams that just were not playing fair Belgium didn't they were fine Belgium were fine it was it was Panama Tunisia and Colombia of course absolute nightmare teams to play against so as I said I'm so proud and I'm also extremely nervous you know before this game I was getting that you know that tense feeling in your stomach before you're about to go on stage or something I don't ever get that really. I get it when Arsenal get into the finals of the FA Cup or whatever it may be. And I'm sure I will, I will get it even more on Wednesday. And then even more if we make it into the final. So let's talk about the team, the players that stood out and of course the goals. Let's start off with, uh, with the goals. So Kane didn't score today. Fair enough. You don't score every game, but he was still absolutely vital. We had a goal from Maguire. An absolutely bullet of a header. Absolute bullet of a header from a, from a corner. Another corner. We seem to be scoring a lot of headers and general goals from set plays, which is good to see. We've never really been strong at that, it seems. And then uh, Deli Ali, who for me really wasn't on it today. Didn't have a great game. Pulled off the second goal for us, which ultimately won us the game. And again, another header. This time not from a set play, though. It was from open play, finally. Um, there's a few players that I really want to bring up because I'm just, I'm so, so impressed with them. You probably know who I'm going to talk about. The first one I want to talk about is Jordan Pickford in goal. He is, I think, England's best keeper at the moment and rightly so was given the chance to, to be the number one keeper. I went into the tournament thinking it would be Butland. At least I thought Butland was our best goalkeeper going into this tournament, but Pickford has proved everyone wrong if they doubted him. And I don't think actually a lot of people did doubt him. The only doubts he were he, he was getting before the tournament started and maybe at the end of the first game was that he wasn't commanding enough and wasn't holding the ball. He was parrying a lot, which I get, um, but I can't knock his performance today. Absolutely unbelievable. I believe he got man of the match. Plenty of saves that kept us in the match. And Sweden, I think it would have been a different game if we had a different goalkeeper. Pickford was just on fire tonight. So well done to him. Um, Maguire... You cannot go wrong with Maguire right now. He is a staple in this team. Without him, we would be so much weaker. He is the one that strikes fear into the opposition when we get a corner or a free kick because he's the one who's going to win the header every single time. His passing, his defending, you know, that's what he does. He's a defender, but he's so good at it. And it wouldn't surprise me if a big club are going to go in for him this summer. You know, come the end of the World Cup, I know he moved to Leicester last year, so he's still got quite a long time of his contract left. He's going to go for 40 million plus at least. He's worth it though. From what I can see, he is worth it. If any defender is worth 40 million right now in England, it's him. Absolutely unreal. Wouldn't surprise me if he ends up at Chelsea, Liverpool. I mean, imagine if Liverpool got him. Van Dijk and Maguire. Woo, that would be absolutely unreal. Arsenal won't go in for him, I know that. But um, I would love that. And uh, talking of defenders, I guess kind of Trippier is a defender. But I wanted to talk about Trippier because... He's another player that's just blown me away. I think he's actually been top three players in this tournament. I really mean that. His deliveries, his defending, his passing, his supporting runs. He's just the ultimate right back or right wing back. And that's incredible because we've got Kyle Walker. You think before the tournament started, Walker would have been 
our main right wing back. You know, if we were going with this 3-5-2 or whatever formation we decide to go with on the on the day, we know Kyle Walker's one of the first on the sheet, but he's been converted to a right centre back and he's done okay, you know. I think he's done very well considering. But Trippier, my God, Tottenham are very lucky that they had him when Walker left because it's I, I think he's almost as good as Walker. I really, really mean that. Walker is brilliant, don't get me wrong. And probably is the best right back in the Premier League. But Trippier is not far off. Absolutely unbelievable. And then Henderson in midfield. Just so, so blown away once again. He's had a great season for Liverpool. Hasn't had the easiest of careers in terms of getting criticism for just passing it sideways and backwards. Unbelievable in this tournament. And, you know, what more can I say? England are into the semi-finals. I'm so proud and so happy that this is happening. Is it coming home, though? Can we beat Croatia, who I think are the better squad? No doubt about it. I think they are going to give us the toughest game of this World Cup so far. But if we can beat Croatia, I think we'll beat France or Belgium, whoever in the final. I really, I really believe in this team because there's no pressure on us. If we don't win it, it's fine. This will still go down as a hugely successful World Cup. But if we win it, my God, we will never hear the end of it. Whereas France, Belgium, they are expected to win. The pressure is all on them. So thank you for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed today's games, make sure you drop a like on this video if you agreed with my, my viewpoints. I really enjoy making these videos, so you can expect to see more reviews as more games happen. And now we know the two semi-finals. We almost know who's in the final, and that is something I cannot wait to watch. The final in just eight days' time. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribed and I will see you next time. Come on, England!